Are you tired of being the placeholder girl? You know, the one that I'm talking about, the one where he says he does not looking for anything serious. He doesn't want a girlfriend. He doesn't want to settle down. He's not ready for it. So you end up waiting around, waiting your turn in line. You're in the queue and you're like, "Mm, any day now he will change his mind and he'll see how great I am and he will want to commit. You're fooling yourself because the right man will do the things necessary in order to lock it down. If there is no sense of urgency, consider the doors closed. We're going to get into today how to tell if you are just a placeholder in this man's life and how to get out of it because you guys, you don't want to be the placeholder for anyone else where you are building this man up. You're making him the guy that he needs to be for his forever home. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Way Too Wifey. I am your host, Respectfully Gabby, and in this podcast, we talk all things dating and relationships in this modern day. And if you are new here, hi, I'm Gabby. I'm an online dating coach where I help you transform your confidence to live your best lives inside and outside of relationships. You guys, it all starts from within. If you are only attracting chaos in your love life, if you're only going after the fuck boys, if it's one thing after the next and you're like, why am I attracting all these fucking awful men? Let's figure out what's going on in your life first. Okay, heal the things in the parts of you that need to be healed. And then I can absolutely assure you that the quality of men that you're going to be attracting is significantly better in people that you actually want to date, people that will actually treat you right, and the people that actually want relationships with you. If you are curious about the packages that I have to offer, check out the stand link in my bio or in the episode description and read more on that. Okay, before we hop into the episode, if you could please leave that five star rating, turn on your bell notification so you'll never miss another episode, hit that subscribe button wherever you're watching this. And guys, I really do appreciate every single one of you for leaving the ratings. I have been noticing a lot more people leaving ratings, so I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really love you guys. Let's hop into the episode. Okay, I let's see if I have any updates. Guys, I have been having the craziest experiences in London. I just feel like I've been meeting people left and right and like everyone is like a good connection in the right direction that I want to go in my life and it's just everything. I'm in a fucking flow state and it feels really good but it's also a lot of chaos happening in the background too and I can feel it and a lot of energy is crazy. I don't even want to date. I'm like having so much fun in my life and like meeting new friends and going out and seeing new people. I'm like... I, dating seems just exhausting. I don't want to meet anyone right now. And I'm like, I did that for a little bit coming here. And I'm now even just opening up a dating app. I haven't really been on a dating app in, um, since I got here. But even opening up a dating app, I just feel like, ugh, like, ugh, this doesn't feel right. I want to get out of this. I don't want any part of this. I don't know. I, maybe it's just because I'm in a big city right now. I just feel like it's so easy to meet people naturally. Like, why am I even entertaining some random people on Hinge that just aren't doing it for me? Anyway, it's been a flirty, fun girl summer so far. Um, I went to go see Burning Boy this weekend in London and made some friends on the train afterwards, went out with them, and it was just like a vibe. Yeah, and just like, I'm really content with how things are going here. So we'll see. I don't know where life is going to end up, but yeah, I'm just kind of open to possibilities right now. I'm really in a flow state and I love that. I think, you know, I was thinking about this other day and I just a quick little message before I get started. I was thinking about this other day and I'm like, there's part of me and I'm not even going to lie about it. There's a part of me. I'm like, I'm 30. I have to fucking settle down. Like I am in panic mode and I'm like, oh my God, like I need to figure it out. I need to find out like what my next move is. But then there's an another part of me that's like, that's just society that has brainwashed me and trained me to believe that I need to settle down and life stops at 30. Like it just doesn't, it really actually doesn't. And I'm like, what do I want at my core? I'm craving like fun and adventure and like I need to take it step by step because I don't think that I'm necessarily on anyone else's path. I'm really just living my life and if it feels good in the moment that I'm going to go for it. And I was thinking if you have 
the intention out there and you have the want and desire in your heart to find someone and to find your person just let it go and release it i think for the longest time i was like really holding on to like i have to do this because i need to settle down i need to like start having kids blah blah blah, and i'm panic mode i realistically i'm like am i really there right now i don't i don't know that i am that's okay I'm just like, I'm living my life. I'm so happy right now. I'm like meeting a bunch of people and it feels really good. The right person is going to come to me in the right time. I know I'm in a healed place. I know I'm enjoying my life. I'm living my truth. I'm doing the things necessary for me to like fill up my own cup and for me to be happy. And the intention is out there. It's whenever that thing is ready to come into my life and when things are actually settled down in my own life that it's going to happen for me. And I'm like, I know that I am too much of a catch for someone to not lock it down. I know that my person's out there. I know it's going to happen when it's going to happen. And once you really fully, truly believe that, you release all control. Oh my God, I have to go find this out. I have to go figure it out. You're chasing after what you want instead of it's going to come when it's going to come. I'm going to meet the right people when I'm going to meet the right people. And some of the people that I meet now could just be the link for my future person in the future. As of right now, I'm just enjoying myself. I'm having a good time. I, I just don't feel that sense of pressure at this moment as I did when I like maybe even got here or like even for the past couple of years, that pressure to like, I have to figure it out to settle down because it's really draining. And I think once you hold on to that attachment and that fear, things don't go the way you want them to go. They actually push you further away from what you actually want. And I really just truly feel like within the past couple of weeks, I've just released all control. Like whatever's supposed to happen is gonna happen. I know that everything behind the scenes is working out for me to live my greatest truth. And once you really believe that, I think that things actually start to happen for you because I swear to God, as soon as I release control and I'm like, I'm just sending it up whenever it's meant to be it's gonna be and I'm cool with just living right now I really am just like I feel in flow state that's what it comes down to now you know that you're in flow state when everything just I couldn't even like put the pieces together if I wanted to that perfectly meeting someone who's a connection to something that I want or meeting someone who's a connection to another person that is beneficial for me everything has been happening really beautifully and it's unfolded very naturally without me having to force the pieces together so release fucking control that's all I have to say as a preface to this video it really has nothing to do with the video but it's been a thought on my mind and I wanted to get that out there for anyone who feels pressure it's causing a lot of friction in their lives because honestly it doesn't feel good when you feel like you're trying to force chasing after finding someone to settle down with and it has to happen right now because that's what society is telling me it needs to happen it's like it will happen if you have it in your heart and you know that your intentions are pure you know that you're in a healed place in order for things to align things will happen for you. I can promise you that. I just, I know it within my being and I'm not even questioning it because I know that that's facts. Guys, today we're talking about being a placeholder. How to find out if you are the placeholder. Why are we doing that to ourselves? Nothing feels worse than waiting for something that may or may never come. You're waiting on a man to figure it out. You're hanging yourself up on someone else's timeline because you think in your heart you know that you're supposed to get be together but at the same time still lost in life he's still trying to figure it out he hasn't fully decided what he really wants he doesn't even notice the gold that is in front of his face his indecision about you should be your decision to walk away i get we get caught up our emotions get involved feeling a connection with someone i think this is one of my biggest lessons in love relationships dating genuinely personal experience through dating of what i've learned this is my biggest lesson truly just because the chemistry is there and the connection is there this feels so good and there's so many coincidences i'll give an example and i know i talked about my neighbor last time but like i just as an example this is the first thing that came to my mind I think sometimes I will trick myself into believing that something is meant for me because of so many coincidences that happen. Um, but ironically, my neighbor have come to London quite a bit, he lived in every single place that he's lived in here, um, in an Airbnb is the same exact buildings you may or may not know this, but London's fucking huge. And even just Southwest London, which is where I'm at is 
fucking huge. And for me to live in the same exact buildings three times as someone in my heart, I'm like, wow, this is too good of a story. Like it's the red string theory, which if you don't know, it's like you're supposed to meet that person, but it's just when the right time keep running into them throughout your past, but not actually running into them. It's like when you're supposed to meet, you'll meet. But what are the odds that we lived in two places ago? I was at, I stayed in one place. He literally lived across the street. The next time when I came here in March, I stayed in an apartment complex kind of thing and he lived in the same building and now we live literally next door to each other but in my head even though he's not my person this is probably most definitely not who I'm gonna end up with but in my head and I think even if I were to have met him like a couple years ago in this scenario I would be so attached to the outcome because of the story that I told myself the story being we were meant to meet we were meant to be in each other's lives and because we've lived in so many places and what a coincidence this is because the story is there you, I, I can't tell you how many times like things like that happen in my life of people that I meet and I tell myself I almost think it's a test at this point I tell myself like all these crazy things had to align and because all of those crazy things added up this has to be my person and because we have a connection we have the chemistry it's got to be my person. But what you fail to sometimes recognize is that that person doesn't actually want the same things as you. Yes, maybe we have an amazing connection. Maybe we have the perfect story. Maybe he has a lot of the characteristics I'm looking for in someone. But at the end of the day, he doesn't want a relationship. And do I even want a relationship? I don't even know at this point, okay? Maybe not right the second, but I, I do think like, in the near future eventually i'm going to get to that point of when i am settled down because i'm still like traveling about and still living my life and i feel like i need to get this out of my system just because all of those things aligned perfectly at the end of the day do we want the same things even out of life do we have the same values like a lot of things were probably off that i didn't even really get to see fully because we only hung out that one time I'm just using this as an example because this was the first thing on my head. I promise I'm going to stop talking about him after this. There are so many times in my life that that has happened where I trick myself. I fool myself into believing this story because we have this amazing connection and you wait around for these types of people because it feels right and it feels like you have to be with that person and this has to be your person because you feel like so drawn and so connected to this person and and just because there's other coincidences, let's say, for instance, you really, really, really are into like some show and this person happens to like that show, you think of it maybe as a coincidence, but realistically, there's so many people that probably like that show, but just because you have feelings for this person, just because you have a connection with this person you think that it's more it's deeper than it actually is but i see this so often because so many people are like well this one guy it, it, i can't even get my head around this one guy and i'm going to wait for him i'm not going to entertain anything else because i'm so so drawn to this one person but does that person even want to be with you ask yourself these questions because it will be very obvious if that person does want to be with you and i think when you hang yourself up on this man's timeline you fuck yourself over because you're waiting around you're waiting around and then all of a sudden he gets into a relationship even though he said he didn't want a relationship and you're like well, well what just happened there you told me you weren't looking for anything and i was waiting around until you were ready and now i'm just here baffled confused that you chose someone else when you wait around for someone else and you allow them to be indecisive about you you are directly saying to them subconsciously that they matter more than yourself because at the end of the day you're really not getting what you need or what you want out of the situation but you are willing to wait around and if you're willing to wait around for someone it almost knocks you down a value because you're not going after what you you actually want and what you actually deserve being that you want a relationship so if you're waiting around someone else to figure it out here's my advice to that because now in my life the biggest ick for me honestly is when a guy 
and I, I've thought a lot about this, and this will immediately turn my feelings off, really had to get to this point to get here to like figure out and not get hurt anymore. And I kind of talked about this last episode, but when a man doesn't know what he wants or he's unsure about what he wants, not even just like with me, but just in his life in general, he's like confused and doesn't have direction and like doesn't have a clear path to get there. His life is just a big question mark. And do I want to be sitting in his confusion with him? Not at all. And so now internally, I'm like, does he know what he wants? Does he know that he wants me? It has to be both of those things, by the way. And not just like, oh, he doesn't know what he wants in life, but he knows that he wants me because realistically, I know what I want out of my own life. So I would want someone to also like have a direction and a clear plan of what's going on in their life because when both parties know what they want out of life it is so much clearer of the direction of where your future is going do our futures even align together that is like one of the biggest things that i look for now in dating potentially finding a long-term partner do they have a plan for themselves how sure are they about me i mean realistically i'm like how sure am i about them for sure but if I'm like, yeah, I like them, I would take a chance with them, but they're like unsure, then immediately I'm like, then I wouldn't. I wouldn't take a shot for you because I'm interested in people that are interested in me and that's just like how it is. Otherwise, my feelings, my emotions, I can easily grab them and take them out of the situation. It's not that deep. But it took me a long time to get there. I will say it really took me a long time to get there because immediately when I felt that connection, I would attach myself to that person. Even my head that that had to be my person. And I'd be like, this is my husband. It has to be, look at all of the clues as to why that this is my husband. You will find, and you will convince yourself, you'll find all of the things that lead you to believe that you are accurate in, in saying that this is your person. You will take and grab for anything. Well, this person does this, and I always knew that I would want someone who did this for a living. <laughs> like, do you realize how silly that sounds? Well, I realized that like he comes from this background and I always thought that like I would date someone from this cultural background and like we lie to ourselves so much. Like, yes, maybe you have an attraction towards like a specific culture or a specific career or specific like hobbies or whatever, but at the end of the day, that doesn't make a good partner. That's just someone might be interested in the same things or might come from a place where you find interesting. That doesn't mean that that person is your forever person. Some things kind of line up. You don't want to be sitting in a place where you are making that man the best that he can be. You are put it, pouring in all your effort. You are giving him the emotional support. You're revamping his entire life just for him to take all of those things Add, it, add that quality to his life and then go off and find someone who appreciates the upgrades that you put into him. That's so fucked. Do you realize that you just poured your heart out and energy into this person and building them up to the best them that they could be for them to take all of it and go run somewhere else with it? Don't make him the man that he needs to be in order to find his wife. He can find and figure it out on his own because, you know, we got better things to do. Make yourself the best person that you can be in order to find your actual husband, not the person that's going to take, 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 and then go off and find someone else probably is going to end up fucking him over in the end because let's be honest, karma is a real thing. If you are not this man's dream girl, you are his placeholder, meaning if he's not absolutely like oh my God, I have to have you. And maybe, maybe he's not in the right place. Maybe his life is not in the correct order in order to insert someone else effectively. Maybe he's like, wow, I have to have you, but like I have to get my shit in order. And if your presence doesn't push him to be the best him that he can be in order to have you, then you're wasting your time. If his, if your presence is just making him like kind of like still scattered and like trying to figure it out, still doing his confused little puppy boy thing, you're also wasting your time. I want to be someone's dream girl. And I just like, don't want to settle for anyone else that doesn't believe that I am their dream girl because who wants to be in a relationship where he doesn't see your full value where he's just there because he feels like he has to or he's there because it just like feels comfortable or feels right like you want to be someone's like I'm getting my shit together because I want to be with you or if he already has his shit together and then it's like then you will actually know because he will have an urgency to settle down with you to pursue you to 
not want you to be with any other guy. If it is not a fuck yes from him, it should be a fuck no from you. So let's get into some ways to tell if you are just the placeholder in this man's life. Number one, he is not sharing you around his friends, family, whatever. The girl that he wants in his life, he wants to share with everything. He wants to bring you around his people. He wants you to explore his life. He wants you involved in his life as much as he wants to be involved in your life. He wants to bring you around his friends and family. If he's not, maybe it's too early on, whatever, but like eventually if he if you're waiting around and you still haven't met his like family or his friends, and you're asking him and he's like, oh, you know, I'm just not like ready for that yet. He may just not be that serious about you. He may just be, okay, well, this is like someone that I can entertain in my own time. I don't want to bring her around my friends and family because this is not going to be someone that I see long term. But if he's bringing you around his people, I don't think that necessarily means everything to everyone. But because I think some, some people, that's just a casual thing. Like, let me just come on, hang out with my friends and me. My family's super chill. It's not that like my, they've probably met so many girls that I'm seeing or talking to or whatever. It's really not that big of a deal. But if he thinks it's a big deal and he's bringing you around his family and friends, then it's a big deal that he actually does see a future with you. Number two, he's uneasy about the future of you guys. If he is including you in future plans, like, and not, I'm, I'm not even saying about like, love bombing it's the first couple of weeks and he's like let's go on a vacation together blah 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 because i've gotten that so many times and guess what they're the first people that are gonna ghost you i promise you that or they're just gonna be like spark died i'm out they're not serious they're love bombing there's you know signs to tell that but if it's months in he's like i would love to go on vacation with you i you know like i really see a future with you or like he's making these future plans to future events he wants you to be plus ones to weddings he's like really actually interested of including you in his future plans he sees a future with you otherwise if it's like the first week or two of dating and he's saying oh yeah i want you to meet my friends meet my family i want you to um go on these trips with me i want you to do do, do, blah 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 blah. take what that man is saying and throw it out and (laughs) don't even register that in your brain because that is complete love bombing and i promise you though in future faking because i usually those things just never really pan out if it's months in and he's like oh like let's go do this together in in a couple of months like i'd love for you to be involved in this like family function that i have or like my friends having a birthday party i'd love for you to come with me any of these things this man has a plan for you in his life otherwise you're probably just a placeholder if it's months in and he has not had any thoughts or talks about the future at all Uh, Meaning if he's not doing these things and you're like, oh, well, like I'd love to do this thing in the future, this event I want to go to in the future. And he feels a little uneasy or he's trying to say like, oh, well, I have something planned that weekend or like he's he gets uncomfortable talking about the future. It is probably because you're just the placeholder until his wife actually steps in or until he figures it out and decides to leave. Number three, he always has something better to do. Like you ask him to hang out, you ask him to go do whatever. And he's always busy. He always has things going on. He can never really get around to his phone, to answering his phone, to answer his texts, calls, whatever, until he wants something from you, whether that be sex. It doesn't even have to be sex. It could really just be like, oh, he wants emotional support. He wants attention. He wants something from you when it's convenient for him. If it's only always convenient for him and not when it's convenient for you or for the both of you, it's a problem. Okay, he's using you to get what he wants and to fulfill his own needs and not actually commit. This is a one-sided relationship and it's up to you to wake up and realize that's what's going on. And I think that this one is overlooked because for me, I think I've fallen into this so many times where I am so involved in other people's lives. I'm like intrigued. I want to know what's going on. I'm like there for you. I want to know what's up. But does he also is he curious about what's going on in my life is he curious about you know being there for me is does he want to be a part of my life because if he doesn't the chances of him actually being serious about me are very slim does he even care to like ask questions these are things that i used to overlook a lot because i i guess a little bit of a people people pleaser tendency of like wanting to fulfill all their needs but then also not getting my own needs met and 
I didn't even really realize that was a thing until maybe the last couple of years of like, okay, I see what's going on here. And I'm waking up to the fact that I need to be more conscious when I'm going on dates and I'm the only one asking questions. This is not a mutually beneficial thing. But I will say sometimes if it's just like one date and like, I think some people do get nervous because I've been on first dates with people and they just talk about their, their, their selves the whole time. And I'm like, didn't love, like, I mean, I had a good time, but I didn't love that it was like super one-sided and I'll either now say something about it and just be very upfront about what happened or I'll see how they act on date number two. If I liked them enough to explore another date, because I think sometimes people are just nervous and I've had this happen before where he talked about himself a lot the first date, but then on the second date, he was very, very, very careful. And I didn't even bring this up. He was just like, very interested in asking questions and like really trying to get to know me and I'm like okay cool that's cute I love that I thought this this was going to be like a one-sided thing again but he showed up he showed himself he was actually curious about getting to know me on the second date so sometimes people are just nervous give them a little bit of time to like you know reciprocate and I think even sometimes I get stuck in that that place where someone's only asking me questions and then I'm talking about myself the whole time and I'm like wait a minute like thanks I like talking about myself obviously but I do want to get to know the other person too it's a back it should be a back and forth thing and I think this really only happened um that I caught on and realized that this guy um we weren't even on a date I think I met him out and he was just asking a bunch of questions about me and I was just like blah 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 answering like giving him all the stuff and he's like do you want to know anything about me and I'm like oh my god (laughs) my fault um yeah I do but now that you put me on the spot like that I'm like taken aback but I think just being more conscious of like is this an equal back and forth this is something I actively now have to be more conscious of because I don't want to be one-sided in either direction I think it really should be a conversation a flowing conversation of like back and forth if that man is only using you as a placeholder he doesn't care what's going on in your life trauma dumping he's giving you all the things in his life he's talking about himself he like has all the things but he doesn't actually care about what's going on in your life and it's very evident because he doesn't really listen to you when you do say these things keep that in mind actively pay attention to these things again you are no one's placeholder The more that you hang yourself up on someone else's timeline, waiting for them to come around to the fact that you are it, the more you're disrespecting yourself. And I think the less respect this person is going to actually have for you. No one's going to respect fully the person that's just waiting around. Like, put yourself in the other person's shoes. If that other guy was just waiting around, just like, hey, I'm here whenever you're ready. Just here whenever you're ready. You're going to be like, I don't this no this doesn't feel right this doesn't feel good like why are you so set on me when I don't even really know that I like you like the the energies are off when someone puts someone else on a pedestal instead of like both equally being interested you kind of question whether or not that person really even respects themselves and no one's gonna respect you if you don't respect yourself first have a little bit more respect for yourself and know when to walk away because the more you keep yourself as a placeholder the more you're letting this man benefit from you you're not reaping any of the benefits yourself that is it for this week's episode i hope you enjoyed and if you did please leave that thumbs up that five star rating wherever you're watching this whatever rating system they have and then i will talk to you all next tuesday